Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part three of Galileo Conquest, starting out with Project Len. Short for Leonard, this bizarre looking device was intended to fulfill a few contracts. Uh, these are basically contracts to test things on the launch pad, such as the protective shell and uh, this little uh, heat shield we're going to test at the launch site as well. And then, of course, once that's satisfied, we have that third contract to test a decoupler while splashed down in the water. And, of course, to do that, we're going to need the power of the solid rocket booster to provide a swift kick up its arse, as they say, and uh, gracefully arc it over whereupon the parachute will deposit it gently in the ocean, away from any rabbits. And off we go, heading towards the heavens, and not turning at all, despite my best efforts. Those wings are the Delta Deluxe winglets with their little tiny control surfaces, and apparently they are too tiny to do anything of consequence. They are, I think I've moved about one degree off the vertical. And so indeed, instead of heading out to the ocean to complete the third contract, Instead, we head off into the upper atmosphere, and, uh, yeah, we've already collected that science data. So what else are we going to do? Time to send Len back to the seminary where he can perhaps learn some new tricks. I mean, sorry, design bureau. And in truly Soviet style, we have solved the whole turning problem by turning it on the launch pad, just like the original Sputnik, the original R7s. Look at it go! Brilliant! Surely this will collect all the scientific data I need for my scientific plans. It will make those contract, uh, those contractors be, be very happy with their things, with their requests. Now, as a mere foot soldier in this organization, I cannot fathom why this organization would need to know how a TR2V stack decoupler works in the water, but it is not my place to question, merely to uh, perform, to commit, to follow. Okay, Len, you have now reached your final destination. Let us see what you got. Let us see what you got. Nope. Nope, it's not working. I'm out of electric charge! Well, uh, that was rather disappointing. I guess we need to go and add some batteries to this. I tell you, Leonard is now starting to develop a real personality, demanding to be called Bishop, as it were, but his parachute is firing because I forgot to check my staging! It's a good thing that the exhaust trails from these solid rocket boosters don't actually interact with the canopy because otherwise it would probably set fire to it and destroy it. That was actually one of the reasons why the Ares rocket was abandoned because any use of the launch escape system early in the flight would result in the capsule descending under parachute through the still burning cloud of solid fuel. Uh, which would not be too good for the parachute, the spacecraft, or more importantly, the crew inside. After all the previous attempts, I'm half expecting rabbits to come out and cause some trouble, but no, we get off the launch pad. We're moving very quickly due to the kick up the backside by that solid rocket motor. And we are indeed heading out to sea, to the place where we will, in fact, complete the testing of this all-important contract. Honestly, I think what this really tells us is to always check all your possible failure modes. We had a failure mode due to lack of steering, we had a failure due to battery power, we had a staging failure. Finally, with everything working on the fourth attempt, I think we're finally going to complete this contract. 
Of course, we didn't tell the people in advance that we thought we would complete this contract because we didn't want to get hopes up after all the previous problems. But yes, one more contract out of the way. One tiny amount of science and money and I don't know, what did we get from that? I'm sure it worked very well. We'll also just clear out the debris from there. And now we can actually move on to the next part of our grand plan. We have just enough science, we can either choose to unlock general construction, which adds, oh, it has protective shells and a crate that looks really nice, a bumper because we might want to park in space. Uh, or we could go with flight control, which adds things like reaction control thrusters and windows and new rockets, a little propellers. Uh, oh, and uh, little envelopes for my airships. I think that's the way to go. Let's do it. As you can guess by now, Jebediah is finally going to space. This is actually a pretty complicated rocket. I've decided that we are going to make our first uh, real complicated spacecraft be something that not only carries Jebediah Kerman into orbit, but also carries hardware to survey the surface of Kerbin, and we will leave that part in orbit. Right now though, well, right now I'm just trying to keep this thing flying safe for uh, complicated reasons, well actually for part count reasons, I have a, a pair of solid rocket motors attached by a single stack decoupler, which was why it was so hard to fly it early on. But now, now we're just travelling upwards on this LVT-45 engine, which provides the real control during ascent. It is kind of notable in Kerbal Space Program that a lot of people do use the solid rocket boosters early on. Whereas in real life, there's only one crewed spacecraft that has used solid rocket boosters early on, and that is, of course, the Space Shuttle. Now, the Ares also was tested with this, and uh, the Space Launch System may use this on its first manned flight, but of course, that's all in the future. But anyway, we are in the present right now. Jebediah has reached space, becoming the first Kerbinaut to reach this. The consensus is that it's really lonely and really floaty up here. Let's deploy these solar panels. That's right, so this interstage here, this middle stage, is actually going to remain in orbit. It is going to be a uh, survey satellite, among other things. It's also going to be able to serve as a communications relay. It's going to be a science platform. It's going to just do all the stuff that we want, I guess. But yeah, the survey platform is going to be a really important thing because I have i don't really know what Gale looks like. I'm going to make sure I don't call it Kerbin. Make sure I don't call it Kerbin. So yeah, let me, uh, let me figure out. Here it is here. And again, start that. Okay, where's the camera? I got I to gotta click on some icon at the side here. Wow, look, we have a little scroll bar now. That's just how many buttons we have here. I'm thinking... It must be... It's not any of those. Which one is it? Oh, it's that one down the bottom there. ScanSat! But I don't have time to analyze the results just yet because I have to perform that circularization burn. There we go. It's going to be a 1,000 meters per second burn. Man, I am rusty in terms of my uh, ascent trajectory at this scale. The mystery goo floats around despite the fact that I'm under acceleration. Not sure how that works. Regardless, we're in orbit. It's time to perform an EVA because we, of course, we have the talent and we have the science that's just floating out there. 
There, get out. And first of all, ooh, what was that flash there? Let's do this. You wish you had binoculars. It would be cool to try and spot the KSC. Why is it called the KSC when we're on Gale? Shouldn't it be the GSC? I mean, that's it. Your Galileo's Planet Pack, literally unusable. How could it possibly be published with such a glaring bug in it? Okay, Jeb, you know where you're going. You're going to try and sneak in there and grab that stuff. Just try to avoid the solar panels because they could electrocute you. Uh, and the batteries, they could electrocute you. And that transmitter could microwave your brain. And yeah, just make sure you keep your helmet on as well. That's pretty important. I mean, seriously, don't be getting any ideas at this point. Ooh, more science! Get the science. Uh, and more, we're getting near the grasslands and the midlands. Man! We're losing all the science. We've got to get it back on board the ship so we can collect more science. There we go. We can transmit some of this stuff back. We don't need that, though. Now let's align the scanning dish for our maximum performance. Wow, so I haven't used Scansat uh, scan in a long time. This is like a little zoomed-in section here showing me, I don't know, zoomed-in stuff. Redrawing. I think ScanSat is great because it actually, you know, in many ways reflects the behavior of real, you know, aerial, or sorry, orbital scanning of planets and things like that. So, you know, you learn about orbits and everything. But this is going to be important because it'll help me, hopefully help me find all the different biomes and everything that I want to collect data from. That could take a while. Of course, I do have science here and now to keep reminding me when I'm passing into a new area, but what I really want to do is get a map so that I can actually make a point of visiting each area. Anyway, one region I do know that I have to visit is upper atmosphere, or sorry, the upper orbit, above 300 kilometers. So we're going to boost up to that, and this, the capsule will visit there, and then it will deorbit from up there. And then the rest of the spacecraft will continue to boost itself into a higher circular orbit to continue scanning from higher up. I mean, it's important to note that in the early days of spy satellites, they were originally thinking in terms of having the crew on board with the lab to develop the photos and send them back. During the Gemini program, the Air Force looked at something called the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, and they actually took a Gemini capsule which had previously flown in space and then fitted it out to test their setup and then flew it again. It was one of the first pieces of space hardware to fly to space twice, long before the space shuttle. But of course the X-15 beat it to uh, being the first thing. Anyway, we are of course headed back. Now we're still in orbit and to deorbit this thing is going to use the monopropellant. It has a pair of little uh, RCS thrusters and I'm just going to use the translation controls to bring the perigale, perigee, I guess we can call it perigee. That would be almost like Earth. Bring the perigee down to low enough value and of course we're just going to use the stock heat shield here. Meanwhile, the orbiting laboratory sensor thing still has plenty of fuel so I'm going to put it into the a properly circularized 300 kilometer orbit so that we continue to collect all the science that we can, or at least all the mapping data that we can. I, I am not familiar just yet with the planetary mapping on ScanSat. It doesn't seem to be showing me any, uh, it doesn't sh seem to be showing me the biomes just yet, so maybe I need a higher tier version of the ScanSat. Whatever, it will be fun finding out and learning. But meanwhile, Jebediah Kerman is about to learn what it feels like to re-enter Gale's atmosphere. Honestly, I don't know if we're going to end up splashing down or litho-breaking at altitude of zero. It doesn't matter, because uh, we have really no choice in the matter. We just have to accept it and hope that we don't hit any mountains. Looks like there's... Uh, well, the re-entry effects are looking nice. It's great to like experience these things for the first time. Look at the look at the sparks. It's awesome. Ooh, look at that. Oh, sorry, MB, I'm fangirling over the re-entry effects. I'm not sure where those come from, but man, it does it does make the thing look a whole lot more impressive. Whole lot hotter. Jebediah Kerman is no doubt calling these things in as some sort of fireflies.
They might actually literally be flies that, you know, laid their eggs on the heat shield and now they're on fire blazing past it. I mean, maybe it's a shellac heat shield, right? I mean, shellac's made from bugs. So, you know, then you would actually have some sort of fire bugs floating past as uh, the heat shield burns up. Have to look at the thermal properties of shellac sometime. But right now, Jebediah's interest in the wildlife is, well, he just wants to explore to see what is outside and whether he can collect some new science. Collecting some of that there, EVA report. Storing everything there to make sure that we, we clear out the pod. And it looks like we're sourcing our science from Gale's Mountains. No problem. Okay, so... Jebediah Kerman, you are the first to complete this bold mission to somewhere. I'm not actually sure where we are. We're in the mountains somewhere. I hope you did bring a radio. Oh, you brought a flag. Well, that'll no doubt make it easier to see you from orbit. I mean, either that or you're walking home. I don't know, I, I, we couldn't really control our descent, but I do think we're at least on the right continent. And hey, at least I didn't get wet this time. I don't believe we're going to perform a submersible space program unless I figure out that there is actually some more science down there to be had. Honestly, I think we need to be looking outwards. It is a space program. We have all sorts of science out there. That looks kind of weird. I should probably check about the, the textures. It, I know what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like the Snoopy hat headset with the that they have in the Apollo missions. It does... I don't know if it looks right on a square-headed Kerbal like that. There we go, 120 science. Oh joy, what shall I spend it on? Uh, perhaps I should spend it on some research to find out where the launch site went. It's completely vanished! Perhaps the R&D has come up with some sort of cloaking device. Look, it's there, I can mouse over everything. Or I can just click on the things at the side. So let's go to the research and development. We might as well spend our science while we can. So it's rather anticlimactic, but I can pretty much only buy one thing because everything in the next tier costs 90. So I'm going to have to look. I think this is the first tier where I can get the telescope to start looking at the other planets. And I will do that in a future episode. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs> <laughs>